if you want to install Mac OS on your Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine, then this video is for you. I'll show you how to do it using a virtual machine and the best of all, it won't cost you a penny. Let's dive right in. Before we get started, make sure you have at least 80 gigabyte of free space for the Mac OS installation. You need to disable the Windows memory integrity during installation and you need to disable Windows Hyper-V. All right, to disable the memory integrity, click on the Windows search icon in the taskbar and let's type core. Select core isolation from the suggestions, then toggle the switch to turn it off. Now remember, you can turn it back on once the installation is complete. Next, let's disable the Hyper-V. Again, from the taskbar, click on the Windows search and type CMD. From the right menu, click on run as an administrator, then click on yes when prompted. You should see the command prompt window. Copy this command from the video's descriptions and paste it right here, then hit enter. You should see operation completed successfully. Close the command prompt window and you need to restart your computer to apply the changes. Once restarted, now open your browser and let's search for VirtualBox download. And from the result, it should be the first link, click on it, and once you're at this page, click the link labeled Windows Host to begin downloading it. It should be around 106 megabyte. Once download is complete, double click on the downloaded file, then click yes when prompted. And now you should see the setup window. Click on next, and here you can change the location of the installation folder if you like, otherwise click on next. Then click yes and yes one more time. And finally install. Once the installation is complete, click on finish. You'll see this dashboard. Here you have to click on new and then type a name for the operating system. I'll call mine Mac OS. Here you have the option to change the installation folder location if you like. Next, we need to download the Mac OS ISO image file. Let's open your browser and copy the link from the descriptions below or you can just search for Mac OS ISO download. Once you're at this page, from the right menu, expand the ISO image file and here you'll see different versions. I'm going to select Big Sur for this example. Click on the download arrow and it should start downloading. The file is around 13 gigabyte, so just be patient until it completes. Once the download is complete, let's resume from where we left off at the VirtualBox dashboard. Let's click on the ISO image drop down and click on other, then browse to the Mac OS ISO we just downloaded, which is this one, Big Sur, select it and click on open. For the type, keep it Mac OS X. And for the version, leave it at Mac OS X 64 bit. Then click on next. For the hardware section, you will need to assign RAM and processor CPU to the new virtual machine. It's recommended to have at least eight gigabyte of RAM, but this will depend on your computer's configuration. If you have 16 gigabyte or more, you can assign eight gigabyte to the virtual machine. However, if you only have eight gigabyte of RAM, you should assign half of that, which is four gigabyte. If you're not sure how much RAM you have, right click on the Windows icon and click on the task manager. Then click on the performance and then memory. In the top right corner, you should see the amount of RAM you have. For example, on my end, I have 16 gigabyte, so I'll assign half of that, which is eight gigabyte. Just make sure you do not exceed the green line indicator. Next, you need to set the processor count. Open Task Manager one more time. This time, click on the CPU tab. Here you can see your core count. For me, it's eight. So I will assign half of that, which is four. Once done, click on next. Here, you have to create a virtual hard disk and assign disk space to the virtual machine. The amount of disk space you can allocate will depend on the free space available on your drive. For example, I have 174 gigabyte of free space, so I will allocate 
around 73 gigabyte to the virtual machine. You can assign more or less space depending on the available free space. Once done, click on next, then click on finish. Now you will see the Mac OS displayed on the left hand side. Before running and installing it, we need to make some changes. Click on the settings, then select system from the left hand menu. In the boot order section, uncheck the floppy option and make sure that the enable IO, APIC, hardware clock and EFI are all checked. Next, let's click on the display option and let's set the video memory to the maximum value of 128 megabyte and check enable 3D acceleration option. Then click on the network. Under adapter one, it should already be set to NAT. For the additional backup, enable adapter two. Choose a bridged adapter from the dropdown and select your wireless adapter. You don't need to make any changes in the USB section. If you want to change to USB 3.0, you can do so. But if you're unsure, you can leave it at USB 2.0. And finally, click on OK. Next, we need to patch the virtual machine before proceeding with the installation. In the general section, remember your virtual machine name. In my case, it's Mac OS. Close the virtual box completely and make sure it's not running in the background. Click on the Windows search bar and type CMD. Right click on the command prompt and select run as an administrator. Click yes when prompted. In the command prompt window, we need to run a few commands. You'll find all the commands in a file I've shared in the descriptions below. The command file has two sets of command, one for the Intel and another for the AMD processors. Depending on your system's processor, choose the appropriate set. I am using an AMD processor, so I will be using the AMD commands. Before running the commands, you need to replace the placeholder virtual machine name with your actual virtual machine name. To do this, open the command file in notepad, select VM name, click on the edit from the top menu, then find and select replace from the dropdown. In the replace box, type your virtual machine name. So for me, it's Mac OS. Click replace all, then copy all the commands and go back to the command prompt. Right click and paste the command and they will execute automatically. Once done, close the window. Bring up the virtual box, select Mac OS and click on the start arrow icon. The process will now begin and it may take some time so you will have to wait until you see the next screen. If you get stuck on the installation screen or if you encounter any errors, you will need to take the following steps. Close the installation screen, select power off machine and click on OK. Close the virtual box completely, restart your computer and once it's restarted, search for the virtual box, open it and select Mac OS and click on the start again. This time the virtual machine should initialize properly and you should not encounter any installation errors or stuck on the installation page. The first page you'll see is the language selection. Choose your language and click on the next icon. And here you have four options. Before you click on the install Mac OS, click on the disk utility, then click on continue. From the left hand menu, select VBox hard disk media. You will need to format it. Once selected, click on erase. Give your hard drive a name and click on erase again. When the process is complete, click done. Close the disk utility box. Now click on install Mac OS Big Sur and then click on continue. Click continue again, then click agree. Select the virtual Mac disk you created and click on continue. Now the installation will begin. This process will take some time, so you will need to wait until it's complete. All right, 
Once the installation is complete, you will be prompted to select your country or region. Choose your country and click on continue. Then click continue again. For accessibility, you can select not now if you prefer. Choose your preferred option for migration assistance or click not now. Then it will ask you to sign in with your Apple account. You can skip it for now or sign in if you have one. Agree to the term and conditions. Enter your full name, account name, and password for your new account. Click on continue, then continue again. If you want to keep Siri enabled, click continue. Select the Siri voice you want and click on continue. And finally, you're logged in into the Mac OS desktop. You can now enjoy using various applications, explore the Apple Store, and experience the Mac OS interface. Now to switch to the full screen mode, close the virtual machine by selecting power off the machine and click on OK. Open your Windows search bar again and type CMD. Right click on it and select run as an administrator. Click yes when prompted. Now you need to copy and paste this command, which you can find in the descriptions and hit enter to execute it. And now you should be in the virtual box location. Next, we need to run another command. Before copying and executing the command, we need to replace the machine name with your virtual machine's name. Then set the desired resolution. I'm going to set mine to 1920 by 1080. Here under choose resolution, you can pick any of these resolutions and replace them in the command above. Now hit enter to execute the command and close the window. Let's open the virtual box again, start the virtual machine and log in with your username and password. You should now see the resolution has changed to 1920 by 1080p. To switch to full screen mode, click on view at the top left corner of the virtual box window. Select full screen mode from the drop down menu then click on switch to enter the full screen mode. Now your Mac OS virtual machine will run in a full screen mode for better experience. And that's all I wanted to show you in this video. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this. If you have any questions or if you encounter any issues, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Take care and bye for now.